Almost half of the carbon dioxide produced on the planet is consumed by the oceans, living organisms and plants. At the same time, plants play the most important role, since they not only absorb CO2 but also produce oxygen, which is of great importance to people and animals. But if moss, shrubs and other vegetation have the ability to absorb carbon dioxide, then trees in addition are also able to fully filter the air, purifying it of all harmful substances. Scientists even conducted an experiment, establishing that oak gall, bitter orange, lemon and laurel filter the air quite well. The approximate power of one tree was also established. An adult plant can absorb up to 80 kilograms of CO2 per year. Seems like a big number, right? But cities with industrial plants manage to produce much more of this harmful gas. On average, human activity around the world creates 36 billion tons of CO2 per year directly affecting climate change around the world. Realizing that to solve this problem, it is necessary to plant more than half a billion trees occupying a huge area, physicist and engineer Klaus Lackner decided to turn to science. As director of the Center for Negative Carbon Emissions at Arizona State University, he began to actively study the problem and how to solve it. Since the main task was to capture and utilize carbon dioxide from the air, he and his students conducted experiments with various materials that could absorb gases. The result of the study was an artificial tree, a special device for capturing carbon dioxide. Unlike an ordinary tree, it has no branches, no leaves, no roots. Rather, it resembles an unusually shaped air conditioner. At the heart of the prototype is a special polymer resin plastic, which reacts chemically with CO2 in the air. When the resin is completely filled with gas, it is immersed in water where another reaction takes place. The material begins to release gas into the water. Thus, an artificial tree can fully extract CO2, turning it into a solid, liquid or gaseous resource. The prototype was installed on the rooftop of Arizona State University, where Klaus Lochner and his graduate students watched its operation for over a year. As the creator himself noted, his device works automatically, requiring only minor adjustments from time to time. However, speaking at the annual conference on dramatic climate change, he explained the importance of the artificial tree before the present. People say, why not just grow normal trees, natural trees rather than those artificial trees? But I argue that's like pulling a plow over using a tractor. You certainly can do it with a horse, but it's not as efficient, Lackner said. Our trees are specialists for carbon dioxide collection, and they're about 1,000 times faster than natural trees. According to his calculations, only 100 million installations are needed to stop the process of excessive emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And if we create installations twice as many, then it will be possible to achieve the so-called negative carbon emission effect, where more CO2 is absorbed annually than is produced. At the conference, his work caused a real sensation. Many of his colleagues even rushed to calculate how long it would take to rid the planet of CO2 again. The result, with 200 million units in operation, was 50 years. But even that estimated period of time seems good. Another subject of discussion at the conference was the practical implementation of artificial trees. The most convenient locations, according to scientists, were large cities and large industrial enterprises. And in order for big business to not take it with hostility, after all devices need to be serviced, they offered several options for the reverse conversion of CO2. In particular, scientists proposed using gas to create synthetic fuel. Although this technology has been known for more than 70 years, it is still not widely used. Open technology, artificial trees can solve the problem of climate change. However, as Klaus Lochner himself admits, to introduce his technology, it is necessary to explain to a huge number of people the dangers of CO2. The problem is, carbon dioxide doesn't hurt right away. It doesn't smell, it's invisible, and it's so hard to convince people. People don't realize that they put out 20 pounds of carbon dioxide every time they burn a gallon of gasoline because it's invisible, he said. In his opinion, until states oblige all companies to forcibly reduce carbon dioxide emissions, his technology will remain unclaimed for a long time. What do you think about this? Please share your opinion in the comments.